So it's a little bit tragic that we've saved what is arguably possibly the most important aspect of all of this steering behavior stuff till this video, which is essentially at the end. I don't know what number we're on here, but if you're still with us, if you're still with me, here we go. We've got something, we've got something that's really going to allow you to use this stuff um, in a much more flexible way in, in, in all sorts of kinds of projects. And what, we, what I'm talking about here is combining multiple steering behaviors. This, this may seem like an obvious thing to do, and, and I hope that it does, but I want to look just briefly in this video at what it means technically to do that. So, you know, we could list all the behaviors we've done so far, like seek, arrive, flow field, uh, we did path, we did separate, alignment. I think these are all the ones we've kind of looked at in the particular videos one at a time. So. In our first demonstration, what I'm going to do is demonstrate for you combining seek and separate. So this may seem, this, so first of all, the idea of combining forces is absolutely something we've, been do, we've done before and I've been doing continuously throughout all of these examples. It's the whole reason why we wrote this apply force method, right? We wrote this apply force method so that we could call on an object, apply force gravity, apply force wind, apply force nervous energy, right? We could just keep applying forces of the object, it would accumulate them into the acceleration and move according to the net result of all those forces. So essentially, this is all we want to do. We want to say things like, um, I'm going to write this down here, apply force seek and apply force uh, separate. So this is where hopefully this notion of combining forces is obvious to you, right? Yeah, we did this. We did seek, we did separate. All I gotta do is bring on both of those in the same example and call apply force twice. And that will in fact work. But one thing we should add onto this, remember we are thinking about autonomous agents and autonomous agents have this ability to make their own decisions according to some set of rules that govern their behavior. And a rule, a way of thinking of a rule that governs how you combine these forces is a weight. Right? How important to a vehicle, how important is it to think about yourself? What's more important to you? That you get to some target or that you don't run into anyone on the way there? You know, for me, I don't want to like bump into people and knock them over. I'm very happy to move around them and I'll take longer to get to the target. Somebody else might want to just barrel through and knock everyone over. They just want that, you know, cupcake or whatever's at the end of the line. So this is something that we need to factor into how we program. What are the weights of these forces and how can those weights be flexible so that different, uh, flexible either from vehicle to vehicle or flexible over time, right? Think again about the simulation. If the target is food and the separation is like avoiding other predators, when you're really hungry, maybe seek is much more important than when you're not so hungry. So we need some mechanism for doing this for how we can combine these forces. Again, this is a kind of a simple thing to do. The hard part is figuring out the algorithms for each one of these forces. It's not too hard to look at combining them. So let's look at a couple different scenarios in code, and I think this video will hopefully be one of the shorter ones. I always say, I should never say that. That means instantly it's going to be the longest one ever. Okay. So first we're going to look at separation and seek. So first I just want to run it, and we can see here that these vehicles are both seeking the target, which is the mouse, the mouse, and they're also trying to separate from each other. Right? We could imagine what would happen without separation. They're all just going to glom right onto the mouse. They're not going to care about occupying the same space. So here we have an example of two steering forces combined. Great. So let's take a look at this in the code. So one thing that I'll point out here, just to like only look at this for a second, is we are calling apply force twice. This is the point. Apply force separation, apply force seek. That's what we're doing. Where are those forces coming from? They're coming from two functions, separate and seek. Now one thing I should note about this is look, here is the seek function. Here's our seek function. If you look at the seek function in a previous example, what it will do is it will at the very end, it will say apply force some force. So we calculate, go through all this desired velocity, calculate all this stuff, get the steering force, and then boom, apply the force to the object, put it in its acceleration. But in this example, we're not doing that. Instead of saying apply force, we are returning steer to wherever it was we called it. So we have a new function. This new function is called apply behaviors. 
apply behaviors as a function that I have added to this example to be the sort of centralized location where we manage all of the forces and the weights for those forces. So first we ask for this from the separate function, the separate force. Then we ask from the seek function, a force seeking mouse x, mouse y. Then what do we do with those? Here, this is the crucial, crucial two lines of code. We weight them. Separation force is weighted by a factor of two. Seek force is weighted by a factor of one. Now, <laughs> admittedly, this is probably the worst possible way ever to do this. Because what, do I, what are my weights? They're hard-coded numbers. That means they can never change over time, and they are the same for every single vehicle ever in the system. So this is my challenge to you, my exercise to you, is do something different. You know, you could think of having sliders or keyboard control to like control various weights. You can control them by purling noise. You can make them all random. You can have some logic. You know, the, the vehicle, each vehicle has like a health value that like goes down over time. And according to how fast it goes down, it scales the weight of the different forces. Later, we're going to see, we're going to look at genetic algorithms. Could you evolve the like optimal weights for this vehicle to behave a certain way? There's so much potential just in these two lines of code. Of course, all I've done is put the number two and one there. But at least we can kind of begin to see a little bit of what's going on, right? What if I set the weight of separate to zero? We can see here, this is seek with no separation. It's as if that force doesn't exist. If I go and put that to two and put seek to zero, now we have, we just have that separation example. They don't care about the mouse anymore. We could say, hey, let me have separate be super important and seek be just a little bit important. You can see like, eh, maybe they're kind of seeking the mouse a little bit. You can see they're like kind of coming in the cluster, but separation is so much more important. So the varying weights of these objects is crucial to how this system behaves. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple more examples. The next example I want to look at is a crowd path following. So this is just actually adding, um, there's not a lot to this one. This is just adding separate to path following. So you can see I can add a bunch more vehicles here. And what do we have here? But just doing that, just those two forces creates a very, very dynamic simulation because not only you go back and compare this to path following without separation, what we have is something you could start to imagine modeling how people flow through a space, how uh, cars travel along the road. Again, this is not a scientific model. We're just trying to create the almost the illusion or feeling of that. But you could imagine how, um, how powerful this could be by just adding multiple forces in here and, 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 and altering it. So this is another scenario where you can play with those weights and try to figure out ways of controlling them. Um, what if all of a sudden they, their path falling goes off and they all go to seek something else, but then they, uh, are they, you know, at, every once in a while they leave the path and go do something else and then come back. There's so much, I can't, I'm just, I could just stay up all, like the rest of my life program different combinations of steering forces and I, I, I'm not gonna do that because it's nice outside today, but you should, you, know, you should think about that for when it's not so nice outside. Okay, um, now let's look at the, the ultimate. I'll say this is the penultimate, the ultimate example of this, which I was going to make a separate video about, but I think we'll actually just look at it a little bit briefly because we already covered separation and alignment in quite a bit of detail. So let's just look at what happens when you combine, um, and I'm going to go to, uh, there's a sort of example here called flocking sliders, which is just, a version of the flocking example that allows me to control the weights. So here we have our flocking simulation. And we can see that we have, the, this is a full screen version with lots of little tiny voids. Oh, so first of all, Craig Reynolds, went in, in developing the flocking system, called the vehicles now voids. Um, is as a kind of variation of the word birds, I guess. I think that's right. Anyway, so I'm, now I'm going to use the word term boy to talk about these creatures in this flocking simulation. So what's going on here is we have the three rules. So in case you didn't uh, look at some of the earlier videos, although I, I guess I should, instead of saying that, I should say, or just to recap, <laughs> the three rules we have in flocking are separation, alignment, three, cohesion. And each one of these rules is incredibly simple on its own and produces a very simple, obvious result. What's amazing about this complex system is these rules for each object are very simple. We put them together, we put them together in a group, we get a highly uh, complex result, not an, an unpredictable result, not a simple, obvious one. So separation means Try to stay separate from your neighbors. Alignment means 
try to align your velocity with your neighbors. And cohesion is the only one that we didn't implement in a previous video, I mean steer towards the center of your neighbors. So we have something like, we have a tension here in a way between cooperation, you could think of cohesion as cooperation, stay together, and competition, separation, compete for space. So I think one of the things about complex systems that really makes them tick is this idea of competition and cooperation together in the same system. So all of these three rules together produce this schooling-like behavior which we're seeing over here. So a couple things that I will just demonstrate really quickly. Um, you can't really see this, but let's add a whole bunch more vehicles. Um, up here I have a few uh, sliders to be able to control the various forces here. And, okay, I'm going to talk through what I'm doing here and control some of the forces. So I'm going to make the maximum force higher, a little bit lower maximum speed. And I'm just going to show you, first of all, what happens when we only have separation. So I'm going to make separation very high. And we can see with separation, the only thing going on here is don't run into your neighbor. This is just exactly the same as the example we had before, just all the little things are really tiny and there's lots more of them. So that's separation, that might be, and now if I take separation off and I turn alignment all the way up, you can see we get these clusters of objects trying to align with themselves. Again, simple, predictable result. And eventually, over time, they're actually all going to move in the same direction. Now, if I turn alignment off and I turn cohesion up, we can see, look, these clusters come together. They're trying to move towards the center, and as they get within a certain range, they suddenly come together. This is kind of an interesting result just on its own. But you can see we have these kind of funny behaviors. The point is, once we combine them all together, if I add a little alignment and I put separation back on, and look at this, like even now there's a bunch of different weights than what we started with, and you almost have this more kind of frenetic, almost insect-like behavior, whereas the weights were more tuned towards uh, more of a schooling or flocking like behavior. So this is something you can really, really play with forever and, and, and use to, for a variety of different effects. Um, just to show you briefly, so that's the, um, the actual example that's in the repository um, connected to the book is 6.9, that you can find the one with the sliders as well, which looks just a little bit more like this. So you can see this kind of, this is with a certain set of weights with a schooling like behavior. You can see its alignment seems to be pretty strong in this one, right? They're really aligning with their neighbors, but there's also a little bit of jockeying for space as well as um, staying together as a group. Okay, so uh, one thing I want to point out. So first, I should say to you, there's a couple exercises you could think about doing. I had that list that I erased of all of the forces. Here's something you should think about doing. Make a project that has every possible steering force you can implement, have examples of, or could implement on your own, and create an array of weights for all of those and see how you can um, control those weights through some set of logic. So first, just try to control weights according to some set of rules. Don't have them hard-coded, whether it's user interaction, algorithmically through probe noise or randomness, or by some logic according to how each vehicle behaves or what it's, it sees in its environment. Another thing you might think about doing, which I actually have an example of, um, is implementing, well, I don't have a full example of it, but implementing Reynolds so, not Reynolds. So, if you read the book, The Computational Beauty of Nature by Gary William Flake, I believe is the author, um, there's a long discussion of flocking systems in that book. And Flake points out that what you don't see in Reynolds' flocking system is all of the vehicle, uh, all of the birds or boys in a formation that looks kind of like this, which you might actually see in the sky if you look at birds flying together. And he proposes, what's, what is unique about this? There is nothing blocking the view of any of these vehicles. And what he proposes is adding an additional force, additional steering behavior, which is that if a boy is in front of you within your view, steer away to get that vehicle out of your view. Keep your view clear. And uh, if you implement that, you will get this formation, which is really quite interesting. So just to show you, this actually involves the dot product and looking at the angle between two vectors. And just to show you um, uh, the beginnings of that, exercise 617 in the repository, there's an example which implements just the beginning of that. So the force is not implemented here, the view force. But what you can see is um, that any other vehicles that are within this blue vehicle's view um, are colored red. And one thing that I'll also say that's really important about these is you might be used to debugging your code by putting lots of print line statements everywhere. We figure out the locations, print this. If it's in its view, print it's in my view. Another way of debugging that's really crucial for these steering behavior-like 
uh, these scenarios that you're working on physics models is actually just draw stuff to the screen. So I know this is working because I'm able to, to change the color of only the vehicles that are within this um, arc that I've drawn on the screen. So anyway, I've gone on a bit too long about this exercise, but there's a bunch of stuff that you could try to do and hopefully um, discuss somewhere when, I, when um, someday these videos have more of a way of um, sharing work and asking questions and discussing with them. Right now, they're just videos, but there are comments. Anyway, um, so I will see you uh, later in. Um, whoa, this is the last video. So I think this actually marks the end of the steering behavior stuff. I, I have some, another example about optimizing flocking systems if there's too many elements in there, which someday I will get to, but you can take a look for those examples as well.